Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's online education program, Let's Paint. In today's Skill Builder series, we're going to combine a number of techniques that I've showed you in previous lessons to paint this pair study. I think you're going to really enjoy seeing how it all comes together. In today's Skill Builder, we're going to combine a number of techniques that I've showed you into one study of a pair. I've sketched the outline of a pair onto my canvas. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can download a design template at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. I'm going to begin by undercoating my pair with yellow ochre, and this is folk art acrylic. Load your flat brush full of paint. Notice that I didn't dip my brush in water before I started to paint. There's no reason to do that. All it does is thin your paint and make it more transparent, things that you don't want. So using the skills that you've developed with your basic brush strokes, you're going to begin to paint around the outside of the pair. Now notice that I'm using the chisel edge of my brush to follow along the contour. It's much easier to do that than the way I've seen some people start to paint, which is like this. And they try to paint along the outside edge like that. And that's very slow and that's not an efficient way to paint. So utilize your brushstroke skills and fill in the outline using the flat edge of your brush. It's much faster and easier to do that. Now, to set you up for success, many people find it very, very difficult to apply a base coat of acrylic paint perfectly smoothly and evenly. That's a skill that you gain over time. So I try to set you up for success, and I'm going to let you know that it does not matter if your base coat is completely smooth or if there are some ridges of paint. We're going to use that texture to our advantage today. Now that I've got the outside of the pair filled in, I'm going to fill in the center with a nice even coat of paint and you'll notice that I'm just putting it on there a little bit haphazardly. It doesn't matter if there are brush strokes that show or if there's some texture to this. It's going to work to your advantage. So we're simply filling in the pair Yellow ochre is a really nice opaque color, covers very well. All right, so we've painted our pair. That was pretty painless. Now, I'm gonna pick up a larger brush and I'm going to paint the background using burnt umber acrylic. So load my larger brush. I'm painting a bigger area, so I want a bigger brush. Always use the biggest brush that you can fit into any given area. If you work with a smaller brush, you're sending a boy to do a man's job. So I don't have to wait for the yellow ochre to dry. I'm just going to use my chisel edge and go right along the pair and then simply fill in the entire canvas with burnt umber. Try not to leave any gaps. Just work right up next to your pair and then fill in. It's all pretty easy so far. We're not doing anything difficult. In fact, we're not gonna do anything difficult in this whole lesson. We're just combining a lot of basic techniques so that you can see how all of these lessons work together. Now then, we're just going to fill in the rest of the background with burnt umber. I'm gonna get a nice, solid, even coverage of paint on the canvas. Notice that when I'm painting, I don't hold my brush vertically. I hold it almost parallel to the work surface. You need to get into the habit of using the flat surface of the brush so that you don't make a hole in your paint. A lot of people will talk about painting and they'll say, every time I do that, I keep getting these light spots. It's because when you do like that, you dig into the paint and create those light areas. Whereas if you lay the brush down, you're applying more paint to the surface and you won't have those little light areas. So just take your time, completely fill in the background. Now, if you're painting along with me, 
Now would be a good time to pause the video and let this completely dry. If it's not completely opaque and even, apply a second coat and let that dry and then resume your video. Now that my pear is completely dry, I'm ready to apply the shading to the dark side of my pear. I'm going to accomplish this by side loading my brush with my shading colors. I'm going to begin with Folk Art True Burgundy. Notice that I'm sliding the brush into the edge of the paint and I'm going to blend on the palette to soften the color. To make this color darker, I'm going to add a little sap green. Stroke into the edge of the sap green and then into the True Burgundy. And you can see that this is making a rich, dark shading color. Now, I'm going to apply this on the dark side of my pear with the dark color going toward the outside edge of the pear. It's almost the same value as my burnt umber background. So notice that I'm applying this using a patting motion, picking up more paint as I need it. If it's dragging, touch the corner of the brush to the water, blot on a paper towel, and pick up more color. You want to make sure to have enough paint on your brush so that it fills in the pores of the canvas. Pay attention to what you're doing on the palette as you flip the brush from front to back. Touch the brush to the water, a lot on your paper towel, and then back to your palette. I'm not going to worry about any of this. The only thing you need to concern yourself with is the outside edge of the pear. Apply the color by patting and feather it toward the inside edge. I want to create a little bit of an indent here at the neck of the pear, so I'm just going to bring the color out a little bit, and right about now you're thinking to yourself, oh my god, this is not going to look like a pear. Trust me, it will. You have to allow yourself to go through all the stages of painting this pear. Right now we're just applying the shading to the pear. We haven't begun to add any of the beautiful highlights to it. All right, so that's the way my pear looks when it's shaded. So at this point, stop the video and allow this to completely dry. All right, now that uh, the shading on our pear is completely dry, I told you not to worry about any of this inside area. What we're going to do now is we're going to clean this up using our dry brush technique. So I'm using a filbert brush and I'm going to use yellow ochre. I'm going to load my brush with the yellow ochre. Don't need much paint on the brush. In fact, you can wipe some excess off on your paper towel. Then I'm going to start right on the yellow ochre. I know it's painting paint on top of paint, but what I want you to notice is that as I dry brush over the area where the shading is, you'll start to see that this yellow ochre layer is going to soften the look of the shading. So not having much paint on the brush, you're still going to see a little bit of the shading showing through. And I'm just going to move my pair so that I'm starting in the yellow ochre area and moving into the shaded area. I'm not going to completely cover my shading, but you can see where I start to lose that hard edge of the shading and the yellow ochre is just skimming along the top and you can actually see the weave of the canvas and the shading underneath it. This is where it starts to look alive. So notice I'm making sweeping X's, putting pressure on one edge of the brush and then the other edge of the brush. It's a very casual way of applying paint. Now, you're saying to yourself, what if I mess this up? Well, what if you mess it up? It's not the end of the world. All you need to do is if you get too much yellow ochre, just go back and simply repeat th the shading application. Then, start this step again. You haven't messed anything up and you've learned a valuable lesson. The most important thing is not to have too much paint on your brush and to allow the previous layer to glow through. 
Notice that I've not put my brush in water at all. It's a dry brush technique, very small amounts of paint, light touch, crisscross motion, and we're just softening the edge of the shading. Still see the shading underneath, but already this looks so much nicer and neater than it did when we started. So if you're working along with me, now would be a nice time to pause your video and finish your yellow ochre application. Now, the yellow ochre that we put on to soften the shading area is dry, so we're going to now begin to develop our highlights. And we're going to use our dry brush technique, and we're going to start our highlight in the area where we want our highlight to be the brightest, and it needs to be a lighter value than what's already on the surface. So what's on the surface right now is yellow ochre. So the next lighter color is going to be yellow ochre plus medium yellow. And I'm just going to brush mix these together. I'm gonna to wipe the excess off my brush and I'm going to check my value. I'm gonna to touch the paint to the surface and if I can't see a distinct difference in this color and yellow ochre, then I know I need to come back and add some of my medium yellow to this. Brush mix it in, wipe the excess paint off, and check the color. I can see that that's a nice value. It's lighter than the one before. Don't have too much paint on my brush. So going down my checklist, I'm ready to continue on. So I'm going to start to apply this where I want my highlight to be the lightest and I'm going to spread this out over a large area, not completely covering the yellow ochre, but you can see I've moved quite a ways from the original spot where I started, just letting the paint drag off the brush, loose X's, pressure on one corner, pressure on the other corner, just moving this lighter value on the pair. You can pick this color up and come up to the top area of the pair, and again, brush this on, covering a slightly smaller area than my yellow ochre. It's not so difficult, you just have to pay attention to the value of the color that you're applying. I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up more of my medium yellow and brush mix that with the color I had applied before so you can see the difference in the values. I need to check this on the object I'm painting so I can see that that's a nice value change there. It's not too dramatic, but it's noticeable. Take the excess paint off my brush, and using small amounts of paint on my brush and a very light touch, begin to distribute this color, covering an area that's slightly smaller than the previous area. It's gonna sound like a broken record, but I want you to get what this technique is all about. It's about a change in value and covering a smaller area. You're letting your eye blend the color. I'm actually not blending any colors together. I'm simply layering one color on top of another, covering a smaller area. So now I'm going to take my medium yellow and I'm going to add some lemon yellow to it to make a lighter value. And you can see that it's slightly lighter than the color I had before. Wipe the excess off my brush. I need to check the value. So I'm going to apply a little bit, and that's lighter. It's not too noticeable, but I can see a difference. When you check this, if you put this color down and it's really, really bright, stop right there. Go back to your palette and adjust the color and test it again. When your color's right, start where you want that highlight to be the brightest. Using a light touch and a small amount of paint, brush this on, covering a smaller area than you did before. We'll repeat the process the top part of our pair, and you can see that our pair is already starting to gain a nice round form. I'm going to pick up some of my lemon yellow. I'm going to check this to make sure that it's lighter. It is. I'm going to take the excess paint off my brush. I'm going to start where I want my highlight to be the brightest. Using a light touch, I'm going to cover a smaller area. I want to encourage you if you're serious about painting and becoming a better painter, to paint this pair study a second time within a week of your first attempt. 
If you do that, you will remember any mistakes that you made. You'll know where to avoid that mistake and it will reinforce the lesson much better than if you wait two or three weeks before you try the lesson again. Now, I've applied several layers of paint and I noticed that I was lifting a little paint right in the highlight area. So that tells me that I need to stop and let everything dry. So if you need to pause your video at any time, stop, let your paint dry, and then come back. And that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, once your highlight is completely dry, we're going to continue on using our lemon yellow. It's right where we left off, covering a slightly smaller area. Now, I'm going to introduce some titanium white to my lemon yellow. Because remember, we want to increase the value each layer. When you start adding white, don't jump values too quickly. Check that it's nicely lighter, but not too bright, and adjust if necessary. Take the excess paint off your brush and cover a smaller area. The lighter layers go much faster because you're covering a much smaller area. I'm gonna come back with just a little bit of white to finalize the highlight there. Okay, and that's how we've built up the light areas of the pair. So if you want to work on that, pause your video and bring your pair up to this level, and then we'll come back and add some other touches to it. You can see that from a flat yellow ochre pair, the addition of the shading and the highlights that we've built up that we now have form. The value changes create the form and make our pair look three-dimensional. Our pair has a lovely dark area to it, but we need to make that look like it's a bit more rounded. So we're going to add what's called some reflected light. And to do that, I'm going to brush mix a nice icy blue color with some titanium white, a little brilliant ultramarine, and a little burnt umber. And this looks like a dirty blue-brown color. It's not terribly light or bright, but I have to check the color on the pair. So I'm gonna take the excess paint off of my brush, and I want to see when I put this right along the very outside edge of the pair, it's a nice bright color on the pair. It's much brighter on the pair than it looked on the palette, but I'm just going to brush this in. I don't want a solid line of this, so I need to make sure that there is some breaks in the color. So right along the outside edge, and then just scruff a little bit of this color in so that we don't end up with a solid line of blue on the outside edge of the pear. And this just gives the pear a wonderfully round feeling. The next thing I want to do is to add some pure black shadow to the pear so using the pure black acrylic paint and my flat brush. I'm going to side load, so I need my brush to be damp. I'm going to load the brush by sliding next to the paint, easing into it, and moving to an area on the palette to blend and soften the color. And then I'm going to apply just a little suggestion of a cast shadow by painting right next to the pair. Then I'm going to gently blend this away from the pair, just fading it into the burnt umber background. And this is just a quick and easy suggestion of a cast shadow. I'm going to add a little bit of lighting into the foreground area. I'm going to take some titanium white and some burnt umber and brush mix these together. It's gonna to be more burnt umber than white. I don't want this to be too bright to start out with. I'm take the excess paint off the brush and I'm going to add just a little dry brushed highlight next to the shadow and gently soften it into the background, making sure that the plenty of background shows through. The technique is the same as we did for the highlighting, just applying it to the background just adds that nice little touch to the painting. So now our pair looks like it's anchored to the background instead of just floating on top of it. So I'm gonna put out a couple of more colors on my palette and then we'll paint the stem of the pair. 
to paint the pear stem, I'm going to pick up some sap green and a little burnt umber and just brush mix a nice dark green color. And I'm simply going to base coat the stem with this dark green color. It paints a little thick, thin it down with just a little bit of water to help it move. Now I'm going to shade the pear stem with a side load of sap green. And I'm going to add some true burgundy to this to make a really nice dark shading color. The combination of the true burgundy and sap green for shading, you can make it a really dark burgundy if you're shading red things, or you can make it a really brown color if you're shading green things. It's a very, very um, nice combination for creating shadows. So just shading there at the bottom of the stem and at the edge where the cut end of the stem is. And then I'm going to wipe the ice blue color out of my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the sap green and burnt umber mix and a little yellow citron. Just want to make a color that's a little lighter than the stem, but not too bright. And then turn this and come along the top of the stem and just add that little bit of a highlight there and a little bit right there. So now we've got a stem, a pear, a shadow. This little study is complete. Let's review what we've learned in this lesson. We started out by undercoating our pear with yellow ochre. Then we side loaded with true burgundy and sap green to create a rich dark shading color and we applied that on the dark side of the pear. Then we switched to a filbert brush to begin dry brushing our highlights on the pear. Remember, start in the area where you want your highlight to be the brightest and let the color fade away. Each successive layer should be lighter in value and cover a smaller area. That's how we let value create the form of our pear, making it three-dimensional. We added a side-loaded cast shadow, and then we dry brushed a little color into the foreground. You've been on an exciting journey with me today from undercoating through highlighting. If you follow the Skill Builder series, you can create a painting just like this. I think you're going to amaze yourself with how good you can actually be.